Amy. I have the pleasure tonight of having uh, Dr. Divya Dar from Harvard. She's a Kiwi Indian. She's uh, originally born, I think, in India, and uh, she went to school in New Zealand. Uh, she did a brief period of, uh, I believe she went to, uh, she went to Boston, or she can actually tell, tell us exactly what she, where and when she, where, where she went and what she did. But basically she's here tonight to talk about her wonderful app, Saratis, which uh, she is trying to supplant uh, the beeper of my day. Uh, these kids are trying to replace it uh, to make it more effective to communicate. So good evening, Divya. Good evening, John. Really awesome to see you here. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, brushing up on your career before I, I, I came, you, you've had quite a, quite a career. Uh, you're pretty active all the way through. Uh, uh, in school, you, were, you organized uh, a group of medical students. Can you tell me about that organization that you put together and what you did with it? So the one um, at medical school is called, um, uh, I, it's, uh, I was part of the New Zealand Medical Student Association, and I ended up becoming the vice president. Um, and in there, I organized um, a policy that the government took, o took up as their national promise in the elections to enable um, students who stay in and work in an area of workforce need to get a, um, part of their loan repaid back. So it was a win-win solution for New Zealand. They got to keep doctors in the country for longer, and the doctors got part of their loan repaid back. So if that's what you meant by um, medical students, that's a major thing that I did with them. Yeah, there was also, I guess, when did the organization P3 come about? Was yeah. that after? The P3 Foundation happened in my first year as a doctor. Um, I realized um, the inspiration for it came from being a medical student. I did an elective in Costa Rica. And, you know, as, as many people do when they go overseas, um, I met some amazing people. And I remember this one girl who became my very good friend. She was a nine-year-old. And um, we ended up becoming great friends. And I realized that she was so talented and so wonderful. But the only thing that was limiting her was the where she was born. Um, and when I remember when I left the place, I asked her, you know, what do you want to do when you grow up? And she said she wanted to be a teacher. And I knew if I could help her become a teacher, she could uplift her entire community. So the aim or the premise of P3 Foundation is to en is to enable young people um, to end extreme poverty in the Asia Pacific region within our generation. Um, and through it, I hope that we can, you know, get behind children like Tanya and get them in a place where they can uplift their own communities out of poverty. So, and when did you go? You went from New Zealand to Boston directly? Yes, so I did. I actually came here in two, August 2011 because I started um, the Masters in Public Administration at Harvard Kennedy School. Okay. And um, uh, did you do, have you done your internship yet? I did. I did a year, about two years of the internship. So I think what you mean by internship is after medical school, right? Right. Yes. Right, and, and have you all, I always ask the, the doctors that, that have uh, accomplished something in the digital field, when did you first know you, you had an aptitude for computers and working? Yeah, I still don't think I have an aptitude for computers. I have an aptitude to solve problems that are meaningful. Um, and to me, the, doc, the, the computer is just a tool. Um, I personally don't really care, like this is going to shock you, but I'm not here because I feel like I care about digital or I care about technology. I care about people. This technology is helping me look after people and hence that's why I'm using it. Okay, when did you, uh, did you come up with the idea of Serratus? Was that your partner? Yeah. So I came up with the idea because I saw the problem. It's crazy what we're doing right now in medicine. Like it's so inefficient. Seven out of ten members of a patient's care team don't know each other, yet we're supposed to coordinate care. How can you do that if you don't know who the other person is? So I recognize this problem can be, A, it's a huge problem. It's costing the system a lot. It's costing a patient a lot in terms of poorer outcomes. And I looked around and I thought about what could we do to solve this problem, and it just felt like, right, all of us are carrying a computer in our um, back pockets, and this computer is capable of solving a problem like this. So that's why we married the two. 
So you told your friend about the problem and your friend programmed it or you said Yeah, so my co-founder, his name is Lane Riddick. Um, we met at business school and uh, yeah, I talked I talked to him about the issue that we're having or what the problems is that I was seeing in medicine and he was like, look, there's an absolute, there's definitely technology that can solve this problem. So we played up, um, he helped code it and I kind of helped kind of design the, the user experience for it in terms of how doctors and nurses and other providers would want to use an app like this. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of curious as, uh, to the actual nuts and bolts, how it works. So could you please take us through uh, uh, the platform? And, and this sure. is a little buggy. I hope we get through this. And uh, this is the first time using the screen share, so uh, we'll try that first. Great. Can you see the screen? Yes, I can. Okay, so this is our website. You can all go on um, on your own, www.certis.com. And there's actually a small demo for the product right here. Um, as you can see, this is the app. It's so easy to like, follow. It's the user interface is super easy. It has two main screens. One is the message screen. Um, and this is that screen here where you can see all the messages. You can see who sent the message and see what the priority of the message is. And then there's a patient-centric screen that you also saw very quickly with the patient in the middle and all their providers around them. And you can touch on any of those providers. Um, and once you do, you can send them a secure message immediately. It's okay. that simple. Can I ask you a question, Divya? Yes, go for it. Okay, so it's basically you're messaging the other person and the screen is all pre-formatted? Yes. It's like any other message that you're sending, except in this case, you're going to send it um, from a patient-centric screen. So you'll see, you know how I mentioned before that 7 out of 10 members of a patient's care team don't know each other? Right. We make those people visible to you. Okay. So now, instead of wondering who the nurse is for your patient, you'll see who the nurse is. And then you can just tap on them directly and start sending messages. Wow. Uh, that, that, that's pretty good. <laughs> I just wish we had that when I was working uh, <laughs> as an intern. Uh, because I, 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 you know, I, I can relate to the problems you have with uh, getting hold of either the nurse or doctor. And and you, it is HIPAA compliant. Now, what what kind of was that a big delay in getting the uh, app approved? Uh, the HIPAA compliancy uh, issue. I mean, HIPAA compliant is an issue. I am I'm, I'm not going to deny it. It does take a lot of effort, um, yeah. and it's actually multifold. HIPAA compliance is not just a technology; it's administrative and it's uh, legal. So you need to understand the whole thing before you can be HIPAA compliant. Um, so we had to make sure that our staff were trained appropriately. We had to make sure that the right policies were in place. And we had to make sure the technology itself was um, well aligned, i.e. everything was encrypted, nothing is stored on the mobile device. Uh, so yeah, it took time. But um, I think we did the right thing because we want to make sure that the patient data stays secure. OK, now to get a hold of a nurse, she has to have the app also? Yes. Okay. So anyone on the app, anyone that you want to communicate with, needs to be on the app. You can send someone a message and then they'll get a link to say download the app in order to read the message. Okay. That's the only way we can make sure that everything stays secure. Is it also on Android or just iPhone? It's iPhone, Android as well as the web. Wow. You're, 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 you're ready to shoot bear. That's right. <laughs> we had to go all platform um, from the start because that's the way healthcare is. Everyone's on different devices. Yeah. Yeah, the majority is iPhone, though, correct? Uh, so that's very interesting, actually. I think majority of doctors are on iPhones. But once it gets to nurses, speech therapists, occupational therapists, then you're going to start to see a shift away from iPhones into Android. And does it go to uh, iPads, too? Yeah, so a bunch of people are using iPads. But I found that most people, because the way that the app is designed and what it's serving, it's serving the function of communication on the fly. Most people don't carry around iPads on the fly. They're carrying around a phone. Right. So that can be used on an iPad, but we've just noticed most of our users use it on an iPhone or on an Android device mobile. Yeah, I, I guess it's kind of going in the future, but you, you, are you thinking about the iWatch at all? you think that will be a possibility to do that too? or? Oh, yeah. So the way we've designed it's a platform strategy, whether or not you're using the Google Glass or iWatch or something else, we are creating a network basically where communication can happen. Now, as when and if 
Google Ads starts to take off and the iWatch starts to take off, we're going to just plug that into this platform. You know, I, I, going through your uh, uh, your page, I noticed I, I went to Indianapolis too. I was there for it, and uh, uh, I went to one day. But uh, yeah, certainly I was surprised at the power of, of Google Glass and where it's being used. So you you can send messages. To, now, did the programmer have to change the app much to make it work in Google Glass? Does it work in Google Glass now? Currently, it doesn't. It's something that we're working on. But also in saying that, we haven't. Um, there hasn't been a huge demand from it in the space that we're in. I think Google Glass is it's kind of coming in, skirting in into the edges. ED could be kind of interested in it. Surgery maybe is interested in it. But what we're talking about is enterprise play, where the whole organization needs to transform and get on this technology. And honestly, nobody's talked to us about Google Glass in that space. So right. I think what we're doing is um, the right way of doing this. We're mobile first. And then as these other platforms come into play, the technology will be available in anything else that you're using. Well, you know, uh, uh, Divya, hang Hangouts are also being used on mobile too. Like this conversation, people can watch it on a on a mobile. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't have to be the desktop. And, and I'm kind of doing the same thing you're doing. I'm tr I'm trying to improve communication, yes. just like you're doing. And and I think it's just just a valid of uh, an improvement in healthcare if you can improve communication as if you invented a device. It's the yeah. same thing. You're basically make, making healthcare more efficient, uh, yeah. which is really what we're after. And uh, another note, um, I didn't get a chance to do a hangout. I don't know if you saw the pre-conference hangouts I did, but I was trying to get one done with the founders of a app called Augmetics. Have you heard of Augmetics? Yes, I have. Yeah, that's a, I wish I had could get them. Uh, uh, on, on a hangout, but they're so busy. But that's the kind of uh, app that's used in an office um, where I think that's going to bring Google Glass into the mainstream eventually where, because every doctor sees patients in the, in the office. Um, and this is like for an office visit. You're familiar with how it works, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, uh, I do. I mean, I don't know as much as I would like to know because I, I understand that Right now, it's all done manually. You see a doctor, someone else is like manually sitting there typing up your notes um, as that's happening. But I understand that they want to use that data to start making it almost um, just like transcription service, like um, transcription services where it just happens automatically. It's not a person. I think um, you know. I I think that would be a huge value. If they can do that, that'll be amazing. Yeah, it, it is. When I heard uh, about their platform, I, I thought to myself, wow, it's going to go mainstream. But one of the things that, that I understand, it's uh, from speaking to some doctors that have used it, it it's recorded directly, like you said, for, through Dragon, and it's transcripted. And some doctors argue, well, uh, you know, I have to go over my transcripts and correct it, so you're really not saving time. But I ta um, talked to an obstetrician in New York. Uh, uh, his name escapes me, Brian. It's age. You'll see, Vivian. I'm mean, going to be my age. But the uh, he said it, it comes with practice with the dragon. If you get really good with the dragon, your transcription is pretty pretty flawless almost. So it's a question of really just practicing with it. So um, as far as uh, the app, it's um, it's available and is it available yet in uh, iTunes? It's available on Google Play, but it's not available on the Apple Store. And even on Google Play, you cannot use the app. It's an enterprise-wide solution app. So your, um, if you want to use it in your own practice, do reach out to me at divyaxeritas.com, and we can help you use the app. But it really isn't for the App Store. It's not for anyone to just download and start using it. It's for an enterprise-wide solution so that you have all the right people on the app ready to go when you start using it. OK. Can you download it from your website at Cervantes.com? No, you cannot do that because, as I said, it's an enterprise-wide solution. So oh, okay. if you want to use it amongst your clinic, if you want to use it amongst your hospital, if you want to use it amongst your ACO, reach out to me. We can deploy it to you guys. Um, but it is an enterprise-wide solution. 
you know, I really didn't know what that meant, uh, uh, Divya. I'm, I'm, I guess it, the, enterprise means the hospital essentially has to... Sorry, it. yes. Yeah, it means that um, um, you as a singular doctor, if you want to start using the app, that's fine. You can reach out to us and make, we can deploy it to you. And then you can share it with anyone else you want to share it with. But that okay. network that you're sharing, it will remain with you. That's your network. Or... You can do it such that if you are part of a network already, i.e. you're part of a hospital, you're part of a clinic, you're part of an accountable care organization, um, we can deploy it to the accountable care organization or hospital system. And uh -huh. then any other doctor, nurse, speech therapist in that network will have access to the same set of patients that you have and you can start communicating much more easily amongst everyone. Okay, uh, so people can get in touch with you if they're interested through your website, your the web, your address, contact info is there? Yes, you can either send it to hello at con uh, seratus.com or you can send it to me, divya at seratus.com. Okay, well, w one question I had before I, before I actually, uh, when I was starting to read about you, um, when you hand over patients, does, do you find it, is it, is it meant to deal with that kind of issues? You know, you know how when you sign out. Like sign outs and stuff. Yep. Do you find that it helps sign outs because you're able to alert the physician before you even go to the meet and see him or her? Oh, absolutely. That we've actually designed the app um, such that it's going to help with handovers because now you can see all the communication that's happened around any given patient prior to you even starting the shift and before you are even a direct recipient of any message. So it's actually very helpful for handovers. Yeah, well, well as you know, any anything that can improve the handovers, because, you know, I was surprised. I read somewhere where they, they said that a lot of errors happen during the handovers, you know, lack of communication and maybe, I know when I used to work in the ER, Sometimes you were busy and you had a, a critical patient and you're signing out, you know, uh, talking over someone's shoulder. You know how that is, right? Some, sometimes the doctor is kind of distracted because if you're in a busy clinic or something, it's not as if you have a, you're sitting down in a nice peaceful room. Uh, and I guess the, the advantage of having uh, an app like you have, you, if you miss something, you can always go back and look at it, right? About a certain patient, exactly. Something that's written. Yeah. Uh, whereas a, the patient might say to me, Doctor Bennett, we, we did an H and H. It was uh, ten over thirty, uh, and maybe later I'll forget it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, he, what he's told me in the sign out. Yep. It's not a huge problem, but it is a problem, and I, I'm surprised that it, they actually uh, ad addressed it in, in an article about the mistakes made during ha uh, handovers. In, in all areas of medicine. So well, you're you're in uh, uh, in Wharton still? Or are you finished with Wharton? Yes, I've finished finished um, with Wharton and Kennedy and uh, graduated in May. So very excited to have that chapter of my life done. It was fun being a student, but I think it's even more fun doing what I'm doing now. So are you in Boston now? Yes, I'm currently in Boston. Oh, okay. And you're going to stay there? Or I, I read that you said you're going to go wherever the app is, is takes you. Exactly. I am currently a gypsy. Every three months we're moving. So um, really it's up for the taking. The, the, it will depend on where the customers are and where the talent is. So uh, if a big hospital picks it up, you'll go or an academic yep. center, yep. You'll, move, you'll move there. Yep. Our job is to just learn, learn, learn. That's my number one goal. So if that means moving there, I will do it. Well, good. Well, Divya, you are the first one in the Boston Medical TV series. Thank you so much. Really excited to have, you know, be interviewed by you, John. It really is exciting. Well, you know, Divya, we're trying to do, and you understand communication. We're basically trying to, you know, I ran across this uh, platform, Hangout, uh, a couple of months ago, before the Google Glass conference, and that's where I used it. And that's where I saw, when I saw the three weeks of hangouts we had leading up to that conference, I saw that, wow, this is a platform that, that you can get people together uh, relatively painlessly uh, on the computer. And uh, you meet some good people, and you have some good conferences, and you, you can network. Uh, I've networked with a lot of people, I'm sure that. Uh, if you use this platform, you'll be able to. But I highly encourage you to do it. 
and to tune in to some of the other hangouts we have. Um, we have Michael Docker tomorrow night from uh, Mass General, the GI fellow that's talk, going to talk about hacking uh, pediatrics, I believe. Uh, and everyone's at 9 o'clock. So, so tune in, Divya. Every night, did you say? Well, most nights this month. Wow, I'm impressed. Well done, John. You keep yourself busy. Well, you know, it's fun. It's fun, Divya. I meet people like you and talk about something I love, which is medicine. And uh, also, I love the computer. Uh, it's just a you know natural mix of the computer and and uh, again it's I'm doing the same thing you're doing I'm just trying to improve communication because mm -hmm. that's that's a valid contribution uh, to healthcare so thank you very much for coming Divya and uh, thank you and anytime, say hi to Michael from me I do know him so I'm really excited you're getting to talk to him oh good okay mm -hmm. well actually if if you want to come to any of the hangouts and you see a hangout you like just email me and say. Dr. Bennett, could, do you mind if I sit on the panel? I'd like to, uh, uh, because you can have up to nine people on the panel. Um, Got it. I will. I'll reach out to you, John. Yeah, anyone, anyone you want to come on the panel, you're welcome. Thank you. And uh, anyone you feel like contribute to the uh, discussion of healthcare, especially for people in the Boston area, just shoot me an email. We'll have them on. Great. Thank you so much. Okay, Debbie, nice to meet you. Take care. Just hold on. Hold PC, on. PC.